Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to another Menthol Protocol Twitter space. First, I thank each of you for being here with us and taking part in our journey. Our last Twitter space was one You gave us an inspiring breakdown of Web3, Bitcoin, Emerge, and the tapestry of humanity. Our amazing CTO mall joined in on the conversation as well. Our beta launch is slowly ramping up, so please keep an eye on our socials for updates and signing up for a chance to be whitelisted for during our beta launch. We also put out some demo videos on our YouTube channel, highlighting everything beta. Our CMO Amir was at Climate Week in NYC. He'll give you more on this later. To wrap up our week here at Menthol Protocol, we also took part in Gitcoin's GR15 round and donated to 30 of our favorite sustainability projects. I mean, what a week we've had. Now to close out our week's work, we have a very special guest, Menthol's home chemical engineer, Michi. We'll also hear from Amir, who will provide us with Menthol Protocol updates and his current travels to New York and future travels as well. Let's get into it. Hello, Miche. Thank you for squeezing out some time to speak with the community today. How are you and where are you joining us from? Hey, everyone. Glad to be on the, the Twitter space today. I'm currently calling from uh, Mexico City here visiting. Um, so, yeah. Terrific. Do you mind talking about your area of expertise and some of the work that you're conducting at Menthol Protocol? Yeah, sure. So um, recently just actually joined uh, Menthol Protocol as a core contributor, actually coming up at around a month um, with the team. So very happy to be here. Um, in the space of uh, carbon methodology is where I'm really focusing on. Um, so basically taking um, some past experience that I've had across sectors, um, recently left uh, oil and gas, uh, tech and uh, aerospace industries. So uh, really looking at how we can come together in the blockchain space and working on a literature review of some current methodologies that are out there. So looking at what is being done in blockchain uh, right now for carbon accounting, um, seeing what are some synergies that other industries are already uh, doing for some regulatory reporting and trying to put that into like a, a literature, a short literature review for the community at large to uh, digest. And then also looking at some methodologies to make sure to implement for a uh, menthol protocol. So that's most of what my uh, focus is uh, on right now. Terrific. I think your signal is a bit cut off, Ashley. If we can't hear you or is it only me? I think it, it went out for a second. Ashley, are you there? So it doesn't seem to work. No worries. So, uh, Mitri, yeah. like in between, maybe you can like uh, like uh, tell us a bit more about uh, your story and what got you involved um, into yeah, sure. into um, also what maybe then brought you into Web three and what are like the very important points we um, all have to understand. A very open yeah. question. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I have some. I've prepared some notes uh, too to just be a little bit more kind of like from an educational. Uh, perspective of awesome. like analogy so maybe if anybody has a pen and paper um i i actually if everybody has a, a chance right now get a pen and paper out or maybe go ahead and get your your phone or your laptop take a little bit of uh, notes and this is just free flow so you know please do your homework on different sources and such but i'm going to give just maybe a general overview in in just a moment here so just a little bit about um my background so um ashley had mentioned that um i'm a chemical engineer by by trade right so my bachelor's in chemical engineering my master's in environmental engineering i did my master's thesis actually on on concrete uh, funny enough. So how do we make value uh, and a value added product out of waste materials and then also doing LCA and CO2 um, and also water metrics around that. So 
by making this value-added product from waste material, how are we offsetting or reducing the original um, environmental uh, footprint, right? So uh, that was, that's a little bit about me. I also did a lot of uh, data science and then more so Web3 integration over the last uh, two to three years. Um, doing a lot of uh, industry work, uh, worked at um, Boeing, uh, Intel, and uh, recently left uh, ExxonMobil. Um, now I'm doing uh, on the side something called Synergy Tech Consulting, so really bridging between sustainability, energy, and Web3 and data. Um, and then recently came and joined uh, the great team here at Menthol Contributor last month. And so really what I want to help uh, today uh, and talk about here at Menthol is really around some terminology about like what we're working on. So what I had just recently mentioned is that right now I'm looking at different uh, carbon accounting methodologies really in the blockchain uh, ecosystem, um, but also seeing synergies of, okay, what are we, what are other industries doing outside of, of Web3 when it comes to carbon accounting, et cetera. So let's talk a little bit about um, some educational and some terminologies. So you'll hear carbon footprint, you'll hear CO2, you'll hear greenhouse gas, et cetera. So if we just think about what is uh, CO2, so that's carbon dioxide. When we're talking about the blockchain like ecosystem, a lot of the CO2 that is generated is a lot from the energy consumption that is used um, to create transactions, et cetera. So that's carbon dioxide, right? But you'll see something called CO2E, which is CO2 equivalence, right? So it's CO2 equivalence is not just CO2. It's CO2, right? Plus methane plus um, nitrous oxide. So those emissions generally are uh, small when it comes to the blockchain uh, footprint, but when we talk about the overall global warming potential, we usually talk in the unit of CO2E, so CO2 equivalents, right? Um, so that's just one uh, key pointer there. Uh, when we talk about environmental sustainability, ecological footprint, impact, ESG, um, those are also very important terminology to understand, which will also be creating content around that to help delineate the different uh, definitions on that. But just realize that those are also, they cannot be really interchangeable. They all mean similar things, right? But uh, we want to be very clear that um, a lot of, let's say, CO2 emissions when it comes to blockchain is on the um, electric, ele electricity consumption, right? Um, but if we look at the world at large, right, if we want to help the planet at large, we're also looking at um, really large uh, industry uh, players that are uh, contributing to the CO2 emissions. And that's really a lot is coming from um, the petrochemical industry, um, construction industry, uh, airline, um, sorry, let's say aviation or fuel industry, so transportation, et cetera. Um, and a lot of this information can be found on IEA. So I think um, everyone from a education perspective should be aware what uh, IEA is. Um, IEA is the International Energy Association, if I'm not mistaken. They do a lot of um, analysis on um, the energy at large, greenhouse gas, et cetera. Um, and let me see. I have some other notes here. When we about um, CO2 emissions, there's also different ways to reduce CO2 emissions. Um and you'll hear probably reduction, avoidance, and removal. So those are all um, different uh, terminologies that I would like to get into. But does anybody have any uh, questions real quick um, on things that I just uh, asked or mentioned just now? I have some questions for later, but not for now. Sure. And we have no questions in the queue either, Mijay, so you can move forward if you choose. 
Okay, cool. Yeah, and I think um, so. I just mentioned briefly on different um, terminologies, et, et cetera, here. And so now I want to get into a little bit of um, some wording around carbon um, capture, sequestration, removal, reduction, and offsetting. So a lot of folks here may have heard those different um, words before, and I kind of want to help uh, put a little bit of definitions to them and feel free to uh, ask any questions. So when we talk about um, avoidance, so carbon um, or CO2 avoidance, you can think about that as um, implementing, uh, let's say, renewable energy projects, right? So you're avoiding to create the CO2 in the first place, right? So it's a really avoiding CO2 uh, emissions in the first place is, is a way that you can think about it. And when we talk about renewable energy, we have to also be very clear on how we um, talk about if there's actually zero um, carbon footprint associated, right? Because if you think about if I want to put, um, if I want to put uh, a wind, um, wind energy, right? There, it may not be entirely zero uh, carbon or total carbon avoidance, right? Because you have to think about, okay, the materials to make that wind um, uh, energy, right? The the wind blades, et cetera. How were those materials created in the first place? Usually we can see CO2 was um, used to make those products through something that's called LCA, so life cycle assessment. Um, that is also something else that um, I encourage everybody to get a little bit of understanding of what LCA is, life cycle assessment. It's not only to CO2, but also um, goes over different environmental uh, impact metrics. So other environmental impact metrics can include water, um, et cetera, so water consumption. Um, so I just talked about CO2 avoidance. Now let's talk a little bit about um, CO2 removal. So the easiest way to think about CO2 removal is there's already CO2 that is in the atmosphere, right? So CO2 removal projects would be projects that directly take CO2 out of the atmosphere. Then there's different ways to sequester CO2. So how do we store the CO2? There's a lot of terminology on something that's called carbon capture, utilization, and sequestration, right? So if we take CO2 out of the atmosphere, where is the CO2 going? Is it being sequestered back into the ground? Is it being sequestered into different soil mechanics? Is it being sequestered via trees or reforestation, afforestation, et cetera? Is the CO2 being utilized? Is it being utilized to maybe make um, soda, for example? These are all just hypothetical um, pathways of how, okay, once we remove the CO2, where is it going? And that's where the topic of carbon capture, utilization, and se sequestration um, that's something else uh, I encourage everyone to look into. So usually it's abbreviated as CCUS. Um, and then we we talk about also uh, offsetting. So uh, the simplest way to probably say about offsetting is, okay, if I'm going to offset uh, a certain amount of uh, carbon, right, how am I offsetting that? So those are the questions are, okay, Am I doing it through a removal project? Am I doing it through an avoidance project, um, et cetera? So there's different terminology in the carbon space, and uh, hopefully this um, gives a little bit of clarity on different topics and terminologies that you guys uh, heard about. Um, but if anybody has any questions, um, please feel free to, to ask. Hopefully this was helpful. Thanks a lot, Michi. I do have a question. So. Um, we've got Nori here with us together, um, which are um, folks on carbon removals, um, as well as positioning themselves so wrongly towards yeah, not having a secondary market, not purchasing the carbon credits to like invest into them, but to retire them. So 
also one a very interesting point is that they're creating their own um, certification system. So uh, they are tackling one problem, the bottleneck of those certification, let's say, um, bodies out there, those third uh, bodies such as Vera and Gold Standard. Um, now I've thrown in a few different uh, points over here. For me, it would be interesting. Um, you've explained carbon removal very nicely. Um, can you get a bit more into that? And also the term nature-based um, solutions. Um, can you also help us to categorize that about well, remove, removal, avoidance, and reduction? Yeah, sure. So um, I, uh, I think if you can just uh, frame the first question for me again, so I can, uh, course, I yeah, think there was two, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, no problem. Yeah, Nature-based um, um, so carbon credits, so to say. Can you elaborate oh. the term terminology a bit? Yeah, yeah. So when uh, for for me, when it comes to nature-based uh, solutions, I think that there's um, uh, there's different components to look at, right? So if we say nature-based solutions, I think there's um, a lot of entities that talk about um, different. Let's say deforestation, uh, reforestation, um, soil or uh, agro um, agro agro uh, methods as well. So different ways of how to sequester the carbon so when we think about how uh what does sequestering carbon means it really means just to put it put the carbon or put this carbon dioxide in a medium where ideally it does not leak into the atmosphere right so we either we put it back into soil um, or we put it back into deep into the ground. So if we think about uh, fuel cells and carbon capture and sequestration, that's not a nature-based um, solution. When you think about a nature-based solution, you're really thinking about um, agro-farming, agriculture, uh, reforestation, afforestation, et cetera. But there's also the time at which how long the CO2 is will remain in that soil or will be uh, transferred uh, in the in the trees or in the plants, etc. And then you have then also um, when you're sequestering it deep back into the ground, that's another that's another method. Um, and then each of which there's a science behind to understand how long is that CO2 going to be back into the ground? Will it ever escape back into the atmosphere, um, etc. So does that does that make uh, some sense? No, oh, awesome. Thanks a lot. I mean, like from what I understood is that it's easy to implement nature-based solutions as in also scale them. Like for example, like the forestation, as you mentioned, as an example, but it's like difficult to measure them. That's what I heard of like, let's say challenges, which, um, which you can mention here. How does that differ from carbon removal again? That was like, um, also mixed in the, the yeah, yeah. Side before. yeah. So, um, there's, so there's, uh, so let's think about uh, a couple things here. Uh, one is a nature-based solution. Okay, if I'm going to, let's say, if I plant more trees, right? In th in theory, that's a a, a potential scalable uh, solution. However, the measurement, which is what you just mentioned, is very key of of the difficulty there, right? Because if we have, um, let's say, something that's called like direct air capture. Um, direct air capture plants are figuring out different technologies to take out CO2, so removing CO2 from the atmosphere and figuring out how to make different synthetic fuels, hydrogen, et cetera. So that's a technology-based um, uh, system. Still removal, so it's still a removal process because it's directly taking CO2 out of the atmosphere but it's not a nature-based solution, right? When we talk about nature-based solutions, um, oh, sorry, let me go back to the direct air capture. Those direct air capture plants, they have measurement systems. We can see the flow rate. We can see the composition of the material that we're getting. When we're, let's say, planting trees or having different agro um, methodologies, it is more so, let's say, scalable but we need to figure out different mechanisms to do monitoring, right? To make sure how are we ensuring that the CO2 is being sequestered and for how long, et cetera. And then also 
understanding what are different mechanisms to make sure that those trees or those um, uh, nature-based solutions are not being disturbed. So we need different, different tracking and monitoring mechanisms to ensure that, as opposed to different um, removal technologies when you set up an operations plant, so a DAC, a direct air capture plant, those are already coming with um, monitoring systems, et cetera. Thanks a lot, Nietzsche. I actually have one more uh, comment, but uh, Ashley, if you have another you want to throw in, um, please feel free. If not, I'd love to uh, throw one more. I, I think we might have questions from the community. Joe, DK, did you guys have anything to add? Yeah, hey, this is DK. Yeah, I was going to uh, add some, uh, ask her for some information on also understanding that in the the, um, the creating carbon offsets, you've got the scopes, the scopes one, two, three, and four uh, in terms of their viability and what they what they're actually um, getting credits two or four, and then the idea of uh, things like wind and solar uh, or some oh. projects that are out mm -hmm. there uh, often, uh, even with forestation, um, from a credit standpoint, if they were going to plant trees anyway, that you know those don't count as an offset per Please. se, right? And, uh, do you have information or do you give a lot of credence, which we do, uh, as I'm a, uh, uh, we, we refine carbon credits, um, uh, at any rate, uh, to people like B zero that actually look at all the, all the criteria that's created from uh, like three or four places, one being Paris Accord, the Kyoto agreements and the UN, uh, tests that are out there for what you're actually doing to um, offset or onset uh, carbon um, and things like that. So, uh, you know, they're, I think they're hugely a part of the conversation. I just came from floor, uh, Flow Carbon's uh, uh, meeting that they had on Tuesday, Tuesday last. Um, I, was, uh, I was also there. This, this was Tuesday, and, you know, one of the things that you, you've mentioned, the natural process of, you know, re, you know, putting trees in and doing things like that, but nobody speaks to very often to the fact that you're talking, uh, well, here's an example. I asked uh, Gold Standard, I said, how many uh, carbon offsets are you going to qualify over the next year, and I, I'm not speaking for them, but what I got out of it was 10 or 15 tons, billion tons, and that is one tenth of one tenth yeah. of tenth of, of, a, of the global, yeah, of, of the global me. Yeah. Yes, me. so that's that's a, that's a very good point, and um, we can we can get in. I'm, I'll get into the nitty gritties uh, right now on that. So um, first, I want to uh, comment that very happy that you are aware of scope one, scope two, scope three, and scope four. Scope four is a little bit more, um, it talks more about the avoidance, but when we think about more from a, a corporate level, they're usually reporting on scope one, scope two, scope three. So when we, when I mentioned about the literature review um, that we're going to put out uh, together and work with the community on that as well, we're going to also be talking about scope one, scope two, scope three, scope four. We'll talk about LCA we'll talk about the verification uh, processes because one of the things um, is that there are several different projects, right, to be to be done. And that's a very good point that you make that, okay, well, if we're projects that are planting trees that they were going to be planted anyway, how are we taking account um, for that? And this is still, you know, a learning process overall of, of where we're going. Um, and working with the, the token suppliers on that. But one of the things that we're also working here at Menthol is to make sure we ask the refi um, questions, right? So 
Um, we want to make sure that we understand, okay, what type of projects um, are, are you supplying, right? Are they um, removal projects? Are they avoidance projects, et cetera? What verification pro pro uh, pro processes are you going through, right? Um, so there's a lot of different questions and a lot of different topics um, to be asked. Um, but no, we're definitely, you know, in the realm of of asking the right questions, collaborating with the right folks, um, et cetera, um, to then be able to work with uh, B2B companies that are, um, um, you know, in this journey as well. Do you have any other questions, okay? Well, I'll wait. You're doing a great job so far, thanks. Awesome, Joe, I know you, and as to speak, do you have anything to add before Miche continue? Uh, maybe just on a quick question on the verification and measurement process for um, natural-based solution, uh, carbon solutions. So companies such as Nori, like, I don't really understand how it's really ethical or might be to some extent immature to you know, already be selling these when we don't have um, measurement systems that are, you know, verifiable and, you know, completely accurate. I just want to get your take on that. Um, just to jump in very shortly, if I may. So, um, Nori has developed a methodology which is peer reviewed, and I'm sure they'll be happy to give you more precise answers on that. Um, what um, DK has uh, picked up and also Nietzsche has been explaining and what what all becomes very apparent is that we have a supply problem uh, going through a bottleneck of the certification bodies. So one um, big solution we try to bring with Web3, also all of the refi players, is creating this, let's say, or breaking this bottleneck up, which is currently held by third parties, right? Um, uh, a few of them. And uh, this is why I personally think it's a very important endeavor of finding different ways of increasing the supply, but of course, in a very ethical and um, scientific approach. That's just my small comment over here. Uh, Meet if you want to. Yeah, and, and, and one other uh, comment just to um, um, explain here as well is that um, for any projects and like suppliers that, that we're working with, and from my understanding after looking through uh, Nori's work, they also have uh, modelings they, like uh, Amir was uh, mentioning, even though there may not, they're working on monitoring systems, there's a uh, modeling, um, thermodynamic modeling, et cetera, to uh, predict and calculate those, um, those, uh, those entities. And then again, also uh, peer reviewed. Um, so that's, uh, that's what we look at as well, you know, the, the rigor of what the the supply uh, folks are are bringing and then also still you know working towards you know bettering um those entities so right. can i oh. make a comment about the peer review circumstance uh as a refiner uh we've been uh, created we have um spent four years uh studying to produce a product that covers all the dynamics of b0 and it is in a field that is not understood because of, of their direction or their expertises uh, at the, at the main standards with you know with uh, whether it be Vera or Gold Standard, and I I spoke with them personally and said, hey, you know we we've, we've got you know projects that you guys don't have the capability to put a, a, a any. Um, you can't put your shoulder on it and look at it because you don't um, pretend or, you know, you're not in that business. And there, there's a lot of new kind of things coming up with that are more, um, well, I say more, they are scientifically backed with a hundred years of, of um, a purpose or, or definition so that um, it's a lot different. You don't need a peer review to look at a product that has, like I say, a hundred mil, hundred years of chemistry, uh, mm -hmm. engineering. Um, I, I'm not going to reveal it now cause we're not releasing until 
um, the beginning of 23. And so we're just trying to stay, not get over our skis in terms of what we talk to people specifically about yet. But when it comes, it's, it also, you know, we're in a field where we can deliver higher volumes uh, with a great, you know, like if you know B0, um, which we study because we know how they implement it in terms of how we implemented building our product. But we are at AAA plus on their rating system. But if you go and say, well, but you're not Vera certified, well, we're never going to be Vera certified because they don't have the, um, they don't have the scientists or expertise in those fields to even make a comment on it. So it's, you know, we're trying to broaden this whole space with more knowledge and more, um, you know, just looking at the picture in a, in a much bigger way, because when you limit yourself to certain situations because they're the standard, um, you also get yourself in trouble of you're, you're, you're looking at tiny bits of, of products going to be delivered because, um, too hard, you know, because you don't know how to look at the, the new stuff that's being created. Just one other comment, uh, Mitsubishi was there, uh, and they're doing a, trying to do a, a CO2 capture on some of their plants and in their their comment was right now it costs us a thousand dollars a ton to do it which means you don't do it i mean that's just puts you out of business before you start so, yeah and and then that's where sorry. regulation we're gonna have to work um and understand like what regulation comes through it, it, especially from a background of like environmental permitting etc but even large uh companies um as well you know when they think about capturing air uh, capturing co2 from their stacks they're mainly looking at fuel cells and trying to um um sequester it back into the ground there's other methods such as biochar um mineralization etc we can we can get into those, sure. those topics as well but menthol we're here at menthol we're we're trying to expand and see uh, you know the different uh, processes etc and then that's why we also have a, a great team here as well on um, of different, uh, and, uh, different engineers, um, myself, chemical engineer, other folks as well. So, um, but yeah, no, thank you so much for, for that, um, insight DK. Yeah. One of the things that I love about menthol and what I've read about you, which is not enough, but the idea that you can, you can create for a company, their position, what they say they want to do and say, and then what they are doing. And you can, you can identify places where they can make changes and things like that, but it also democratizes the ability for individuals to get a fair shot at doing their, you know, doing their own um, footprint. Because right now, I've been in this business or around it for a long time, and ten years ago until today, for an individual, you're talking three hundred dollars a ton on a product that costs, you know, ten dollars or twelve dollars to create because of the small size and things like that, but it shouldn't be that, it, it, you shouldn't have that disparity in cost. And that's where the coin, that's why we're, you know, looking to be delivered in a coin. And that's the other reason I have it to what we're talking about yet, because that, again, it democratizes who can play and it really will open the whole, you know, like what we're doing with, with um, uh, the blockchain is making it real con and very controllable. We know it's real. You can't fake it. You can't sell it twice. You can't do, and that's the beauty of the blockchain is you know what you know what you know. And it also reduces the cost overall for delivering and getting more, uh, making it easier for everybody to participate if they choose. So it's pretty cool. I know what you guys are doing. Thanks a lot so, and so much you, for this feedback. Um, just like one point to mention, um, to mention, so while we offer the service basically for B2B and B2C, we're starting with three, but we'll also go very fast in on web three, B2B and B2C cases. We also involve, in, allow on the B2B level, their community. So we go one level, basically even further and allow their community, not only to participate in the individualization of, we're not only talking about carbon credits, right? We are different other things even going to social impact tokens, hopefully soon, um, allowing them to choose and to engage um, and like be part of that climate journey while being explicitly permissionless. 
especially for the Web3 um, space, meaning that even if the company doesn't want to offset the carbon footprint or maybe they take it on in their governance process um, and someone wants to take it in their own matters, they can basically do so. So uh, thanks a lot for sharing this excitement. And actually the cool thing of Menthol is basically um, being a gateway for any individual or organization to the entire refi space, which basically is a disintermediation, right? And uh, wants to have peer-to-peer, end-to-end connections between the user or consumer of carbon credits and the actual environment project itself. So we're using this Web3 a lot for different things, but I, I'm also really, really thrilled about this whole um, movement. Um, I um, had like one more point which I wanted to share. We are not only looking at Web3, right? We are also seeing big data, AI, um, um, those technologies which like um, accelerate each other, especially big data, AI, and blockchain are seen in a very synergetic relationship. And uh, the event uh, of uh, last of this Tuesday um, was also co-sponsored from Flow Carbon by T Climate, which actually provides the data. So hopefully we will have like a more and more robust like intelligence system and that allowing us to scale in the supply side in, a, in an automated way. Um, but uh, yeah, just wanted to share those uh, thoughts. Sorry. I think we're already six past our original time, but such so so uh, like a big thank you for your participation over here. I love the talk, and we can definitely continue. I'm I'm free for a bit. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, definitely, and thank you so much. Um, hopefully, uh, yeah, feel free to have any questions for us on the core team. Um, very happy to be a uh, part of Menthol and yeah, looking forward to, you know, our DMs are open. Feel free to reach out. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to continuing the conversation. Thanks a lot, God, from my side. And guys, I think we have one more question. Did Jimo awesome, awesome. chime in before we, you know? Yeah, sure thing. Um, it, you know, we could probably talk about this stuff for hours, so feel free to give a short uh, response here. But I did enjoy the conversation. I was on uh, Mental's website, and I totally, uh, you know, uh, relate to, to what you guys are building, uh, particularly on an automated basis. Uh, wondering uh, how you are thinking and positioning for the, you know, the really long-term sort of time horizon for carbon. I guess carbon is much more of a geological uh, time horizon asset class and wondering how you're positioning for that, um, even if it's maybe unnecessary right now to be thinking in the next 10 to 20 years. When you think carbon would peak as an asset class, um, I think the latest briefing from the White House comparing carbon to natural capital um, adds some, some insight um, into this sort of framework. Um, and then a, a segue question is for nature-based solutions like ourselves, we're working on reforestation. Our theory of change is that carbon merely uh, sets a floor price on things like trees. And what we should be really capturing is the upside of other value systems. Many, many of those methodologies under, under development now, um, but, but, um, which carbon can help fuel and, and collateralize. So just wondering, um, what, what are your thoughts around that? And thanks for your time today. Thanks. I think I will defer uh, to Amir on the on the strategy side of the long term. I think roadmap uh, for for Menthol on that, and then I can fill in where needed. Awesome, awesome. Like uh, maybe I misunderstood it correct, uh, not uh, not correctly. So please, like, interrupt me if I'm um, not answering your question. So. Besides carbon credits, we also see many other forms of ecological um, the credits um, being tokenized and accessible. So also biodiversity credits, renewable energy credits, but also other assets besides carbon as an asset class. Um, if you're uh, specifically uh, wanting to, because I'm, I think I just understand it 100%, talk about carbon credit as an asset class. Um, was this something uh, you wanted us to drill a bit more in? Or uh, maybe you can read sorry. Or having to ask again? Yeah, I, I guess a good way of, of reverse engineering that question is imagine a world where carbon is being reduced from the air. Um, what is what is the value of carbon in that context? Um, uh, and, you know, this might be, you know, a couple decades away, but 
I, I, I personally don't think carbon as an asset class will uh, survive the test of time. I think. Got so, you, got you. Like, like frankly speaking, what we have to do in the first step is like not hoard those carbon credits somewhere, right? We hire them, get the next ones on. We know that our supplies have dropped on the whole thing. So um, for me, this is like a secondary talk on seeing carbon credits on a, like I say, like an additional layer of talk one can have of seeing carbon credits additionally also as a financial product. Um, I think it's it's um, interesting to see which innovations the financial market can bring into it. But um, I've heard like, let's say different positions. So I wouldn't have a clear position on that yet. I've heard like different arguments coming from both sides, whether to see it as a, um, like let's say asset class, because you bring all the financial power in, into this into this system. Whereas um, the other side says, hey, we are actually creating those carbon credits to offset them. Um, maybe we've also got a few others on the team. I'm not the most suitable to give you a perfect answer over here, but those are like my two cents on on um, seeing basically uh, carbon credits as a as a, as a form of like net uh, capital. So a bit mixed is my feedback over here, but uh, I'll definitely ask the team and uh, we'll have like a better answer for you on that. Thanks a lot for bringing it up. Yeah, thank you. No, I would love to speak further with the team. I think uh, in many cases, it's Austin. interesting to offer clients the possibility of less liquid tradable carbon, but um, uh, sort of use carbon to de-risk nature-based uh, 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 value creation. And um, I think this this is a longer term positioning, but uh, could still benefit the carbon. Thanks for your time. Let's, let's jump on the call. Looking forward. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. We went a little over, but it's always good uh, when we have questions and people getting involved. That's the whole intent of a Twitter space is to get questions and people's input input and feedback. But once more, Miche, thank you so much for dropping your tidbits of knowledge. It's always helpful, even on my end, to get a real understanding of you know, what you do uh, and your approach and methodology. It's terrific. And Amir, I know you're traveling and you're probably not getting as much sleep, but thank you again for joining and for everyone. And I also see Jaden joining. Jaden was part of our Twitter Twitter space last week, so that's terrific as well. Um, and like Nietzsche and Amir mentioned, please reach out to them in the DMs and you know they'd be more than happy to reach out and answer any further questions that anyone may have. So until, until next time, uh, we'll see you next Friday. And once more, follow us on Twitter and our socials for updates on the beta beta launch thank you everyone aloha thanks bye thank yeah. you bye bye awesome bye bye